In this presentation, we're going to talk about soil water and understanding its role and movement through the soil. Our learning objectives for this presentation is describe where soil water is held. So you should be able to do that. Then we want to match water potentials to plant growth conditions. We want to dis discuss factors involving involved in water movement into and throughout the soil. And we want to predict how water will move given the conditions or properties. Our key words for this section is soil water potential, plant available water, and soil water classification. So water in the soil is the most limiting nutrient for plants. Um, and then second after that is nitrogen. Um, but soil water, obviously, really important for plants to survive and to grow. Um, and so it's a really important aspect of an introductory soil science class. Water's role in soil is multifaceted, acting as a crucial role for life and a key component for soil structure. This section explores the significance of soil water, its interaction with soil particles, that's important, and its vital role in supporting plant life. Be sure to read about soils in greater depth in the text. Understanding how soils hold on to water is rather important. Um, and if you remember back to our, our discussions on polarity, the property of polarity in water, that will come into play here. Um, it uses the adhesion and cohesion uh, properties in water in order to move waters through the soil pores and then stick to it. Um, this process is essential for uptake and soil health. So you, you think of uh, hydrogen bonds, hydrogen bonds bind two water molecules together through the polarity of water. Um, water, also, water also sticks to molecules that are other molecules that are polar as well, and there's all sorts of those in soil. And so it'll stick to soil. So water potential is the total amount of water available for plants to use to do work, right? Okay, um, and so what you do is you add all four of these different types of potentials together and together, and that gives you the total water potential. Uh, let, let's talk about each one of these in turn. First, there's matrix potential. That's water absorbed to the surface of soils, soil particles. Um, or the one held in hydro in a hydroscopic pore. Those are really tiny pores in the soil. Um, and that has less potential energy, but they're all lumped into matrix potential. So that <laughs> that pressure from the adhesion um, is the matrix potential. And then we have the osmotic potential. Um, and that one is stated as the concentration of dissolved solutes and salts in the soil, res soil restricts the movement of water, especially if there is a membrane like a plant cell through which water must pass. Okay. Um, and so if there's some kind of membrane there, uh, like plants, um, it is going to um, have some kind of pool on the water. Okay. Uh, pressure potential, that's pressurized water, is more able to do work. So the last one is gravitational potential, and that just has to do with the effect of gravity on um, the energy of water. As we look at this picture, think about the forces that are influencing water that lands on this mountain. Water's going to land on the mountain, and it's either going to go into the soil or it's going to run off. And we can see evidence of water running off in great amounts because of lots of things playing, uh, 
having an influence on the soil water, um, including gravity, um, uh, the soil water potential, uh, uh, metric potential, osmotic potential, uh, and gravitational potential are all playing a role on this particular soil surface. Now, when we discuss soil water relevant to the plants that are planted in there, we, we have a specific soil water classification. And those are gravitational water, field capacity, and permanent wilting point. Uh, these cl classifications guide irrigation practices and management strategies. Pause the video and look at this diagram and see if you can figure out what it's telling you. Once you have completed a, a little analysis, start the video again. All right, hopefully you've had a few minutes to look at this. First of all, we know that this y-axis over here is soil mo moisture percent by weight. Okay, so basically the only thing we really have to understand is that as we go up, the more soil moisture we have, okay, until we get to saturation. And then over here, we have something called soil water potential, soil moisture potential. And um, as we go out this way, we understand that the pull on water is getting higher and higher. Um, it, the, the soil particles are actually pulling on that water and they're not letting them go. So it's kind of like a tug of war between uh, the plants and um, the soil. And this soil water potential is just showing how hard of a pull is the soil giving to that water. And typically what you can see here is as the water, as water gets drier and drier, um, the harder it is to pull water away from those soil particles. Okay, so a few things I want to point out here. First of all, saturation, that's when the, you cannot fit any more water into that soil. It is completely saturated. Maximum capacity, and that's up here. And then we're at field capacity down here, okay? Uh, field capacity is um, the where um, Gravity has taken all the water that it can and get rid of it. All right, so this is pretty ideal right here for a plant. And then what happens is the plant goes down, starts losing that water as it gets drier and drier. And then when it gets to the point of the permanent wilting point, um, this is the point where it's there's not enough water to keep the plant alive. And um, yes, we are not going to be able to survive. Now, is this true for all plants? Well, it's a rule of thumb. So it's generally true that um, the permanent wilting point is the limit at which plants cannot, um, cannot survive without water. It's too, the water, the soil is holding on to the water too tightly. And so it's not, not going anywhere. Okay. So the permanent wilting point, um, then we, as the soil gets drier and drier, when the air is completely dry, there's no um, water in the air. And then if we cook it out with an oven, completely out, all the water completely out, then we can know what, uh, what water, what the water weight was totally in that soil. Um, and so just a little bit of help there for you. My. Okay, now there's a couple of ways that we can measure soil water content. The first one that you see in your text is um, using an oven. Um, and if you set your oven at 25 to, or 20, 20 to 25 degrees C, which is basically room temperature, um, that is going to get you to dry room. If you up it to 100 or 110 degrees C, that is going to be, after a couple of days, that is going to be oven dry, okay? Um, and that is uh, holding on to the water a lot, if there's any water left. This is called the gravimetric water potential. And obviously, you're weighing uh, the water 
as it comes out of the oven. And so uh, gravity, gravimetric, you're using mass on a scale in order to measure soil water potential. Another way to measure soil water is the volumetric water content. And with that, you still need uh, your gabimetric water content, but then you're going to multiply it by your bulk density. In agriculture, this is called TDR, or time domain reflectometry.